Hey, how's it going guys? I got the Osmo stack. This is the new T10. Look, it's double layered for twice the cleanup fun. Just kidding. Alright, so in this video, we're going to do the T8 up top here versus the 950. Which one to get? They're both the same price. So, hmm, I'm thinking here. Who knows? So, before we begin, check out this giant box. I'm actually going to be unboxing this later this week or in a couple weeks. So, stay tuned for that. Let's have some Osmo fun now. Hey, check out my new uh, table here. Isn't it fancy? Yes, unfortunately the wife doesn't allow me to film on the table anymore. I guess I make too much of mess. What? I'm just a vacuum cleaner guy. I know. Okay, let's keep on going. So, the T8 versus 950, um, they're both on the same platform, the 950 platform or the 920 platform. So, they have 24 CFM of airflow. They also have 200 minutes, which is the industry leading standard. Uh, most uh, vacuums get anywhere from about 2 hours to about 150 minutes. So that's awesome that these 950 or the T8 have really long battery life. Also, they have a simple bun design. I'll go ahead and uh, show you that. So both these robot vacuums have a single button. Press it down once for a play pause. You hold it down for three seconds and you can tell it to go back to its docking station. So here's a quick look at the T8 that makes it different from the 950. You see that AIVI technology, that's the front facing camera that allows it to avoid objects. So, can you tell which one's the 950 and which one's the T8? I can't. So the only hint is that there's a dark silver trim on the T8 that kind of represents the front facing camera. This is Osmo's AIVI technology. This new AIVI technology, which was first introduced on the Osmo 960, is a game changer for lower vacuums because with this front facing camera, it can recognize a whole range of objects, whether it be shoes, shoestrings, cables, socks, also bathroom rugs, and lastly, U-shaped chair legs. So take a look up top there. You see the 950. Despite not having an AIVI technology or the front-facing camera, that is really well pushing the socks aside, also the shoes. The only real threat is the cables and also the other robots. You can see that they don't like each other. They kind of like the competitor of each other and they're just kind of bouncing around. Even though they're the same price, it's hard to tell which one's the better robot vacuum. So you may be scratching your head, why in the world is the T8 the same price as the 950 even though it clearly has that new AIVI technology and the exact same specs as the 950. Well, did you remember me saying that you should get the 950? Here's a couple problems with the T8. The T8 does have some mapping issues. I have noticed that if you physically move the T8, it does get the map distorted. I am waiting for an update from Ecovacs to improve the mapping. I have experienced this on the R98 my very first Ecovax robot vacuum. So hopefully Ecovax can improve the software so the T8 is more stable with the mapping. Okay, let's talk about some other features that the T8 has. Also, check this out. See kind of like these holes right there? Yes, there's two holes. This is to allow the robot to use its self-emptying bin. Yes, there's a self-emptying bin, which is coming later out this year. And hold on, there's one more thing. If I move this mopping attachment, Check in there. This is actually a special power port which allows it to use another accessory. It's a vibrating mopping head. So very cool. This TA is very modular. Up here's the LiDAR sensor. Can you guys hear that? This is a pressure sensor found on like the Roblox. So if there's low hanging furniture, it actually tells the robot to back up. So that's a hit snobby thing. So I did do a sand challenge with the 950 and I attached a section only port that came with the robot vacuum. You can see it did fairly well, scoring about 70% despite only having 1600 pascals. Now down here is the QR code, very nice for paying up a smartphone. Both the T8 and 950 have this feature. So like both robot vacuums, you open up the lid and you can see the design here. I have covered extensively how all these functions work, but they're both the same. The dust bins are interchangeable. So is the filter, you get the red power button that turns the robot off, very nice feature. You also have like a brush, well, where is it, down here, which allows you to clean the extractor bar, and you have a Wi-Fi indicator and a reset button, and a special proprietary jack to hack the robot, very nice. Ugh, so much weight! Okay, I hope I don't drop these things, because that will not be good. Alright, bought the robot vacuums, you can see that they have the charging contacts, the extractor bars, they have the dual side brushes, the adjustable wheels, and the mopping attachments. 
One feature that all the Osmo robot vacuums have is the ability to avoid carpet while the mopping pad is attached. Most hybrid robot vacuums don't have this capability, you have to use the keep out zone, and with the AIVI technology, you can easily avoid these types of socks. Let's see how well the 950 does with the pickup challenge of these Orbeez. Now, the 950 doesn't have the front facing camera, so you can see how it maneuvers around these objects, kind of push them aside, even though it can't physically see them or go around them. Now with the cables, this is probably the hardest part of robot vacuums so they do tend to suck them up. So you want to make sure you pick up the cables. So unfortunately we're human, we're prone to make mistakes and we may leave a stray cable or two down on the ground. Fortunately these robot vacuums are smart enough to deal with these cables. Either they can avoid it or sometimes they may get clogged. Not a big deal. They usually alert the user via an app that there's an issue and all you have to do is just unclog the well, vacuum, there's usually no damage to the cables or to the robot itself. Once you get the claw clear, just go ahead and put everything back together and press the clean button. Okay, so here's the T8 with its AIVI technology, that front facing camera, being able to recognize these objects on the ground. Now one thing to know if you look closely is the side brushes do stop when they get near an object. This is to help avoid entanglement. So. The T8 does fairly well avoiding these objects until it forgot that there was a couple cables on the ground. I think this is just an error with the camera. Sometimes the lighting affects the ability to see or sometimes it just completely forgets where an object is. Hopefully a software update can fix this. So one special feature is the app will let you pick up all the debris and you can actually have the robot clean up just those areas. Very cool feature. Now you do have the option to turn off the AI VI camera altogether. Hey guys, guess what? I got a cool way to clean out your robot well, vacuum. All you have to do is just tilt it and all the dirt and debris comes out the dustbin and onto your floor. It's a great way to make a giant mess and to have some fun on the way. So I do enjoy making these videos for you guys and teaching you all about the cool robot well, vacuums. So if you have any questions about your robot well, vacuum or if you have a specific model you're looking into, hook me up down below and I'll answer your questions. So, you can see I made a giant mess. Well, let me go get my uh, wife here and she can have fun picking all this up. I will see a baseball game. So, have a great day and like and subscribe. See you later.